Welcome to the Flat Iron version 2 tutorial for creating full scene baked textured maps. In this tutorial we will go through some important techniques of baking the whole 3D scenes into bitmaps combined with some new Flat Iron version 2 workflow changes and improvements. As you can already see, in the background is a 3D level created for a real-time computer game. The scene consists of many objects and about 100 MB of layered textures and procedural maps and masks. As such, we can't load it into any 3D engine without losing completely the nice look and the light shades and the global illumination. Let us start with a conversion into the bake scene. It is very simple and it takes about one minute to bake everything in this 3D scene in three or four bitmaps. As first, I will collect all my objects in few logical groups, so-called selection stacks. I will select the big cylinder objects in the background and put them into one stack and call it, for example, tower. As next, I will select the objects around the door and put them into the gate stack. The next is the door, then the stairs, and at the end, I will create for this part of the gateway the stack collection named Path. As you can see, we have now five collections and each will be later a baked bitmap texture of an object from the created stack. The whole scene will be now defined as a gate baking group. Remember that you can now have in Flatiron 2 many different groups for texture baking and each of them can have totally different settings and objects. Pressing the unwrap button will create optimally unwrapped 5 sets for each stack selection set 1. Don't get irritated by the exposed one wireframe at the end. Flatiron shows only the last unwrap set to avoid screen flooding. The rest is very easy to set up. Our final 5 materials we want to have for the export to the real-time 3D engine should be standard material at the end, because of the compatibility. I have toggled here the self-illuminated option. Since we will later remove all lights, we don't need them once the scene is baked and Flatiron will overwrite all those mental ray or V-ray specific shaders with compatible standard bitmaps. The one big news in the Flatiron tool is the ability to bake in a single pass any number of available render elements. For the purpose of this presentation, I will add few of them, like complete map, normal map, ambient inclusion and lightning map. For each of these render elements, you can now define unique settings, names and export paths. As last, I will pick our current selection bake group, called gate at the beginning, and press bake. Flatiron will render now all objects in the scene into 5 bitmaps. Each of these maps will be generated using settings we have defined in the render, render element output. After a few minutes, the job is done. Our screen flashes for a moment and Flatiron has loaded and exchanged all the existing materials with baked maps. As you can see, even in this poor configured uh, Max viewport, the scene is hardly different from the rendered image we have had at the start. All light effects, shades and procedurals have been perfectly converted into textures and automatically changed without any user interaction. Let us check for a second if the generated materials are as desired. I will pick the tower and it is now only one standard material with complete normal ambient occlusion and light map, instead of all those shaders we have seen at the beginning. As such, the scene consists of 5 maps and takes less than 6 MB of uh, graphic memory. Thank you for your attention and if you would like to learn more about full scene texture baking, flat iron and our other products, please visit www.texturebaking.com or our product shop at www.3d-plugin.com.